to worship this morning. It's wonderful to see so many people here. Having too many to fit in our hall is a wonderful problem to have. Amen. Amen. So we're just asking everybody to be a little bit gracious. Uh, we realise that we're doing our, our very best. So if, if you are late, the, the system that we have here on a Sunday is that we have 10 tables uh, with four chairs at each table. That gives us 40, last time I checked. Uh, and that takes us to about our limit in this space. Uh, so uh, I know some of the, the more gracious people are sort of choosing to sort of sit out in the kitchen or out in the vestry or, or even outside if you can. So uh, I want to say thank you for all of your patience. Thank you for all of your graciousness. It's wonderful to be a part of a church family that does whatever needs to be done to make it happen. But it's wonderful to be back worshipping together uh, as the body of Christ. Amen. Friends, today we are very blessed to have Wiki joining us, uh, Wiki uh, Odnyengo. Did I get that right? Yes. <laughs> uh, Wiki is our scripture teacher at Kiama High School. So if you haven't yet met, if you haven't yet met Wiki, please make yourself known to him. He's going to be preaching uh, to us this morning. His theme is the Jesus Curry Pots. So I'm very much looking forward to hearing what all that is about. Going to be drawing on 1 Peter chapter 2. So Wiki, great to have you with us, brother. Uh, really fantastic to have you working up at Kiama High for God's glory. And it's great to have you fellowshipping with us this morning. We've got a few notices and announcements for the church family this morning. Uh, if you're not already giving electronically, please give in the wooden box up the back. We have two prayer gatherings each Sunday morning, one at 8 a.m. Every, every week, one at 8 a.m. on a Tuesday in person, and one at 10.30 via Zoom. So 10.30 via Zoom on a Friday and 8 a.m. in person. The, the Quebec at Pie Drive is happening again if you're not into ordering pies for yourself, you're more than welcome to, uh, to, to, order some, to order a pie for somebody else. You can order a pie which will then be donated to Salt Ministries Meals Program down in the Shoalhaven. So please see uh, Herman. How many weeks have we got to go? Oh, today's the last day, so get in and order your pies today. Elders and Church Council elections are coming up. If you or someone you know you feel is gifted for the role of elder or of church councillor, please be tapping them on the shoulder and speaking to David Hindmarsh, our chairperson of the congregation. We have a prayer walk happening. Last week we learnt about how Jerusalem walked around their, their newly built walls of their city. They claim the city for God. So we thought we would start our own prayer walk around our town. We'll start just here within our church, however, this coming Thursday at 1.30pm. So Pem Lawrence has taken the running with that. So please, if you're keen to do a bit of a prayer walk and claim this new territory, this new space, to claim this new home base for mission for God, please be here. Thursday, 1.30pm. Cameron Cooley is continuing his ration challenge. I'm getting a few donations for Cameron. He's living off the rations of a refugee. So if you would like to support Cameron in that, please see me. I'm taking donations on his behalf this morning. Uh, do you need a lift to church? Hopefully we'll provide some better conditions. We'll provide you with some better conditions than that. But if you would like a lift to church, or if you know of someone that you think might like a lift to church, if someone isn't coming simply because they need a lift, please let me know and we'll try to make that happen. Similarly, if you're a driver and you would be willing to pick up some people prior to worship, it'll be a really good practical way of helping out the body of Christ. If you had a vehicle that was suitable, you could pick up some of our people that are no longer driving, uh, that would be really fantastic if you could let me know as well. Sad news this week with the passing of Betty Palmer. Many of you will remember Betty, Betty Palmer. Betty Palmer uh, died uh, just a couple of days ago. She had been living up in, in Blacktown. And she had not been well. Uh, so the family have asked that, uh, that we not mourn her passing uh, from this life. Uh, she was a wonderfully faithful lady. Uh, my lasting memory of Betty was at the evening service. She would come along and prepare... Uh, the, the, the slices and the desserts for our evening service each week. A very faithful lady. A service of remembrance and thanksgiving will be held here in this space on Wednesday. I wish I could invite you along to it. Unfortunately, as is the case with so many of our funerals these days, uh, we're simply not in a position uh, to do so. We will make sure that it goes up online for you to watch. But yeah, much uh, a, a wonderful member of our community uh, for many years, Betty Palmer, has, uh, is now in her heavenly home. We have some wonderful news this week. Congratulations to Nancy Hawk. O-A-M. Congratulations, Nancy. 
Uh, Nancy has been awarded the Order of Australia Medal for her services to the Jaroa community. So uh, she's actually got it here uh, with, with her this morning. So you can go and have a look and say congratulations to Nancy. But on behalf of your church uh, family, Nancy, congratulations. We're very proud of all you've done. Well done. Put on your sunglasses before you look at it. <laughs> very bright, very shiny. We've also got a couple of uh, birthdays this week. Elizabeth Guy turned 95 this week, so congratulations to Elizabeth Guy. Uh, Don Allen, I don't think I'm embarrassing him to let you know that he turns 90 this coming week. And, uh, and Graham Williams' little birdie is having a significant birthday as well this week as well, ending in a zero, let's say. So happy birthday, <laughs> happy birthday to Graham. It's uh, great to have David and Joe visiting with us. Last time they were with us was for Barb Pierce's funeral. Great to have you uh, visiting as well. So I think the rest of us are locals or members of our extended family. Friends, let's pray. Our loving Lord, thank you. Thank you for this extended church family of which we are a part. Thank you for this wonderful space that you've blessed us with. Father, we acknowledge that without this space, we would not be able to meet at this time at all. So thank you, Father. Thank you for providing it to us. Thank you for the graciousness and the understanding of those who are not able to be in this space and are watching from other rooms. Father, we pray that you'll be very present. We pray that you might make yourself known to us this day. We pray that as the body of Christ gathers together, we pray that you'll be speaking very powerfully through Wiki. Father, we thank you for bringing him to our region. Lord, we pray that you might be using this time to encourage us, to equip us for our mission in the week ahead. In Jesus' name, the people said, Amen. Amen. Now, this week I thought I would break out the guitar. This is actually the week when we said we would have a little bit of uh, sort of uh, music via YouTube, but I thought I would actually do the live music thing. Uh, if you would like to join me every once in a while with the guitar or the bongos or the cello, the ukulele, the harmonica, if you have a musical gift, I would like to hear from you. We have a wonderful team that are bringing us some live music every second week. But if you, uh, if you have any sort of musical inclination, I, I, I'd love to hear from you so that we can extend our repertoire a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit awkward with us just sitting in silence. We're trying to provide a safe place for everybody, of course. Um, you, can, you can hum along, and can I encourage you to please stand as you are able and to clap along. We're going to sing a couple of well-known praise songs just to get the blood rushing. So let's stand and sing. We're going to put on the garment of, play, of praise, and it's no longer I that live. It's so wonderful uh, words to get us started. But please uh, clap along and get involved.
Majesty, we bring you all of our praises and worship this morning. You are the King of Kings. Jesus, who died, is now glorified. He's glorified in that you've raised him from the dead. He is the first fruits of the resurrection, Lord. And we thank you so much, Father, that we can share in his resurrection. We thank you so much, Lord, that we too can experience resurrection life in this life and in the next. Father, help us to put our complete trust in you, to put our complete trust in Jesus as our Lord and as our Saviour. Help us to put our trust in you, that you have the power to bring us from darkness into light, from death into abundant eternal resurrection life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Wiki. We're going to uh, ask Wiki a couple of uh, questions just so that we can get to know him a little bit. Wiki, welcome to Jeringong United Church. Big round of applause for Wiki on the English. Thank you. Mate, you've been at Kaima High for a little while now. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't visited our, our humble worship uh, family, but it's yeah. great to have you with us finally. That's good to be here. Tell us a little bit about your journey. How did you come to be a scripture teacher at Kaima High School? Yeah, wow. <laughs> How did I come to be a You're school? not from here. Yeah, I'm, I'm not from here. Um, <laughs> So, wow, yeah, it's been a long journey. Um, do you want me to take you back to Kenya or do you want me to Take start? us back to Kenya, oh, yeah, wow. I think so. <laughs> um, so, anyway, I was born and raised in Kenya. Um, uh, and um, in 2014, I moved over here with my wife, um, Louise, who is Australian, so we met over in Kenya. Okay, so you've got an Aussie wife. I've got an Aussie wife. Met in Kenya. Met in Kenya. I okay. got married over in Kenya. Uh, this is like a block version of the story, uh, very short and precise. Uh, so yeah, we met up in Kenya, got married. Uh, when we found out we were having a baby, we decided to move back to Australia, or move here to Australia. Um, and um, since moving back, I've been in, in a number of roles. Um, I was a youth and children's pastor uh, for about three years at Bumadari Anglican. And then from there, um, I transitioned to this role now at Kaiama High School. Yeah. We're very, we're very blessed that you've come along. Thank Can you, you tell us uh, briefly about the ministry, about your work? What does a, a day in the life of a scripture teacher at Kaima High entail? Uh, it's a, bit, a little bit different every um, day of the week. Um, so mostly, obviously, it's teaching classes um, from year 7 to year 10. Um, so on average, I've got about four um, mm. scripture classes a day. Um, and in that, um, you know, some days we've got sports as well. So I'll be out. Um, kicking the soccer ball or playing basketball with some of the students um, just interacting with the students on the, on the playgrounds. Um, some days on, the, on Wednesdays, uh, for example, I've got um, a hip-hop dance group that I run at the school, um, which is struggling a, a bit at the moment since COVID breaks and coming back. Um, and on a Friday, we've got a Christian lunchtime group that we run every Friday at lunchtime. Um, and in the mix of that is classes as well, and staff meetings and other stuff as well. Mm, okay. yeah. And so, uh, how are you finding it? I mean, have you been able to uh, sort of, you got a, a good news story, that, that tell us the hard, what prayer points, what, <laughs> what can we be doing to help you? Alright, um, yeah, so at the moment, um, I'm sure some of you are aware of the opt-in um, into scripture. Um, which at Kama High School that kicked in this year. And what that basically means is um, students cannot come to the scripture class unless their parents have ticked yes to them um, coming to scripture. Whereas last year, um, it was a little bit different in that the students would come to class um, and then have a, a bit of a taster for it. If they wanted to stay, then they would stay. If they didn't want to stay, they would get an opt-out form and the parents would sign it and then they would be taken out. Mm. Whereas this year it's been a bit, a bit different in that they cannot even come to experience it for themselves. So I suppose um, a key prayer point with that would be that uh, parents will um, sign their children up for scripture. The parents will take yes to the opt-in forms 
um, and that we might get more numbers um, um, coming to description. And so that happens when they enroll their child in Year 7? Yes. So we're hoping that the numbers might start to roll through the school, the numbers might increase. Yes, and, and that's the biggest prayer point at the mm. moment. Yeah, so. Because the change from opt out to opt in has been significant because obviously the default position was that kids were in scripture, in scripture. whereas now the default position is they're out of scripture mm. unless mm. the parents actually want them to, yep. um, to come to scripture. So I suppose the bigger job for us as well is to encourage everybody else, um, if you know parents who've got year 6 um, kids or year 5 or year 4, start to having these conversations now and saying, you know, uh, it would be great if you, um, you know, opt them in to scripture and have a taster for it. And I mean, it's not a lock-in contract, so um, <laughs> if they change their minds, then they can um, still opt out. Yes. But have a taster and uh, yeah, come Wonderful. to scripture. Yeah. We'll be praying, so that's a prayer point. Thank you so much, Wiki. We'll be hearing from you a little bit later on. Wiki on Yango, everybody. I'm just going to pause and say thank you to God for all his many blessings to us. We're going to dedicate the offering into his service. Let's pray. God of grace, we come before you and we are very much aware of how much you love us, of how much you bless us. Father, we say thank you that you are a God of abundance, that our cup overflows. Thank you, Lord, that here in Australia in 2020, we have so many material blessings. We have more than enough. Father, we pray that you might keep us mindful of those members of the human family around the globe that are struggling this day to feed their family, to provide shelter for their family. Those members of your church that are being persecuted this morning for their faith in you. Father, we say thank you for breaking into our world, for breaking into human history in the form of Jesus of Nazareth. Father, we say thank you that he modelled for us a life of love, a life of grace. We say thank you for his death at Calvary through which he has atoned once and for all for the sins of the world. Father, we say thank you that once and for all the price for our sin has been paid, that we are washed clean by the blood of the Lamb, washed whiter than the snow. Father, we say thank you that you raised him to new life. Father, we say thank you that he is the, but the first fruits of the resurrection. Father, because you have given us your best, so too we give you our best. We give back to you, Father, the first fruits, the fat portions of the material blessings that you've provided this week. We pray that you might take them and use them in the expansion of your kingdom, your domain. We, we pray that you might be using them so that many more people might put their trust in you, become disciples of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray that that might be the case here in our town, around this land and right around the world. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Uh, Diane Williams says our Bible reading this morning uh, for Wiki, it's from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 to 10. Thanks, Diane. <coughs> 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 to 10. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a scriptural house, spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, and a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Amen.
Okay, would you like to come forward and uh, bring us the word this morning? I might pray for you before you get going. Uh, loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, man of God. We, we pray that you'll be speaking very clearly, very powerfully through with you this morning. Uh, we pray that his words might be your words. We pray that he might decrease and you increase in all that he's said and all that he's heard. People said. Thank you so much for um, having me over, Peter. Um, it's good to be here. Um, thanks to everybody as well for inviting me and welcoming me to your fellowship this morning. Now, every year, one of uh, my New Year resolutions is to be a useful Jesus car report. Be a useful Jesus car report. Now, I'm not sure how many of you are into New Year resolutions. How many of you, just by show of hands, how many of you make New Year resolutions? Uh, I'm the only one in the room. All right. Oh, hang on. Woohoo! I've got uh, two people there. All right, cool. Um, I'm one of those people. Um, but only a few um, resolutions. Now, every year I want to be the best useful Jesus Christ report I can be. Um, as a son, as a father, as a husband, as a friend, in every circle that I find myself, I want to be a useful Jesus Christ report. Now, you're in for a treat for the next few seconds if um, you love curries. And I'm not going to take the risk of asking how many of you love curries, just in case. Now, if you're a curry snob, everything that I'm about to say in the next few seconds will sound like blah, blah, blah. But um, please bear with me. Now, curries have got this mouth-watering, appetite-regaining, as we all know, airspace-invading aroma. It's just beautiful smell. You know, that, uh, that you can't escape when it's being cooked. Let's face it, when um, curry's being cooked, the whole neighborhood knows about it. Everybody knows when you're cooking curry. And let's not talk about the burst of flavors in your mouth when you eat curry. It's just amazing. Satisfaction it is wonderful. I'll stop there, uh, in case you don't like curries. So what's curry got to do with salmon? Well, with my limited mind, um, one of my favorite analogies of what Jesus is like and what he does in and through us is a pot full of curry. I love curries, so typical. This is what's going to come to my mind. To me, Jesus is like curry, and we are the pots. By his grace, God has chosen ordinary pots like you and I to be vessels filled with his glorious presence. In all of God's wisdom and in all of his love, he gives us a new identity in him. And he works to transform us into his likeness so that we may be like him. And also so that those around us can't help but smell his aroma in all that we do. So in knowing our identity in Christ Jesus, we find our purpose and we find our strength to face whatever challenges life throws at us. Now, this year in particular has been uh, full of curveballs for many of us, and we are, we are all aware of the many challenges that we are facing in 2020. You know, first with the bushfires, then with COVID-19, and the series of suicides that we've had that have rocked our community in the past recent weeks. Now, some of us here as well this morning, uh, there might be other battles that you've been fighting as well. I don't know. So how do we stay joyful? How do we stay passionate about God in such times as this? Um, like Nehemiah, how do we say the joy of the Lord is my strength in the season that we are in? How do we do that? As co-workers in the Great Commission, how are we to be the feet that bring good news to the world when we ourselves we are experiencing some really bad news. As I said earlier, in knowing our identity in Christ Jesus, we actually find strength uh, to face the challenges that life throws at us. Now, our passage today from 1 Peter uh, chapter 2 reminds us of our identity and our purpose. And I hope you draw strength from it this morning um, and for today and also for um, you know, the future times ahead. Today, what we're going to do is we'll, I'll just zoom in to verse 9 and verse 10, and hopefully um, there will be some encouragement there for you. So, verse 9 and verse 10 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. 
Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. In these verses from Peter's letter to the Christians scattered throughout Northern Asia Minor, we find two encouraging truths for us that are precious for us today and forever. These truths were helpful for the first century Christians and certainly helpful for us today in 2020. They are truth we ought not to forget in the great times of life, but more so even when we face life challenges. Number one, as I mentioned earlier, is that our identity is in Christ Jesus. And number two is that our purpose of existence is to glorify God and to declare the praises of God in the world. These truths apply to the church as a collective, together as a church, and I believe by extension, they actually apply to every single individual Christian who makes up the body of Christ. Verse 9 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, God's special possession. Now, number one thing we learn about our identity here is that you are chosen. You are chosen. Could I please get the next pop on slide, please? You are chosen. You've been chosen by God to belong to his people. The God who made the universe by the power of his word, God who is eternally sovereign over the entire universe, chose you and I to be part of his eternal family. What a great blessing to be chosen to be part of God's family. What a great joy that we belong to the God who made the universe. How amazing is that? Now the Bible is actually very clear to us that this choosing is not like sports. It's not like in sports where coaches might choose you based on um, your abilities or your strengths. But rather this choosing is purely on God's grace and mercy. Now I remember in one of my year nine lessons this term, uh, we explored what, what God's grace looks like in the Bible. Mercy it was actually one of my highlights of teaching scripture this year. Um, to explain grace, I brought a giveaway gift to the lesson. It was COVID sanctified, COVID safe uh, gift. And I mentioned to the students that at the end of, um, um, I was going to give them a challenge, and at the end of the challenge, there was going to be a gift that I was going to give away. So for the challenge, I gave them an impossible task. I was kind of like fingers crossed. Nobody, um, uh, you know, I didn't want anybody to, um, to actually do the, um, like hit the target. Um, so what the challenge was is um, I got the students to make paper airplanes. So do we, are we familiar with, with paper airplanes? Got them to make paper airplanes and um, I set aside a target and I said, um, let's see if we can hit the target. And um, at the end of the challenge, there's gonna be a gift. Now, what they didn't know is at the end of the challenge, not the winner was going to get um, the gift, but rather somebody else. So anyway, off they went, and they were flying their paper airplanes, one by one, but nobody actually hit the target. <laughs> Otherwise, the illustration would have failed. Um, so at the end of the challenge, I stepped up and I gave the gift to somebody who actually had not participated, one of the students who had not participated in the paper uh, plane um, uh, challenge. And in came the reactions from, it's not fair, they don't deserve it. Um, you know, I came the closest. He should have gotten it, or she should have gotten it. And uh, to those who actually, um, the person that I gave the gift, saying, uh, actually, I don't deserve it. They deserve it because I didn't do anything, but they did it. And that's that's just the point. God doesn't give us what we deserve, but instead He gives us what we don't deserve. The choosing here is based is not based on our goodness or, or anything in us but it is based on a good, loving God who loves undeserving people. Verse 10 says um, here, Once you are not a people, but you are the people of God. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So it is a gift to be part of God's family and not a reward. Now, number se a second thing um, about your identity, my identity, our identity as God's people is that you are a royal priest and you belong to the royal priesthood of God. You are a royal priest, and you belong to the royal priesthood of God. So better than the Levitical priesthood in the Old Testament, we all now, we've got direct access to the all-loving, almighty God because of Jesus, our high priest. And his name is Emmanuel, God with us. 
And God calls us as his royal priesthood to not worry, not be anxious about anything, but to present our burdens, present our cares before him at any time because he, do, he does care for us and he answers our prayers in his own wise ways. Like in the parable of the persistent widow, may we not give up praying for our needs, praying for our families, praying for our friends, praying for our nation, praying for scripture. Um, I'm very thankful um, for all of you who pray for SRA in the primary schools, but also at Kama High School. It's good to know, it's very comforting to know that my needs, the needs of the students at Kama High School, are being presented before God's presence always because of people like you guys praying for us and praying for the ministry um, of scripture. So you're not only chosen by God and given access to God as a priest, you are also holy as we learn from these verses in, in, in verse 9. You are set apart for God. You are set apart for Him. You are set apart to reflect God's heart in the world. Like the Jesus Christ report, we are set apart to be vessels that spread the aroma of Christ to the world around us. In knowing our identity as chosen ones, royal priests, holy, set apart people by God, we seek to live our purpose even when times are hard, even when times are challenging, just like 2020 is. Your purpose as a child of God, my purpose as a child of God, is to declare his praises, to proclaim his excellence, to make his riches known to the world around us. Here in Jeringong, in Jamburu, in Bomadari, where I come from, in Kayama, wherever God leads you and I, we are to make his riches known to the world around us. Now, more than ever, we need to know, our neighbors need to know, that there is hope in Jesus. There is everlasting joy in Jesus. There is peace that surpasses all understanding in Jesus. And above all else, there is life to the full in Jesus. Now more than ever, we all need to hear these words. We all need to know these truths. There is hope in Jesus, everlasting joy in Jesus. There is peace that surpasses all understanding in Jesus. And there is life to the full in Jesus. Now, I'm very new to hymns. I'm very new to hymns as I've only come to appreciate them in the last few years. Um, before I, I used to think, oh yeah, hymns are boring. Just, oh. But now I've actually come to appreciate the value of hymns. Now, I don't know if you know the story uh, behind the song, It Is Well With My Soul. But it, it, it's a very, very powerful story. So I am actually going to remind you this morning of this story. And I'm going to read it out to you. It's the story of Horatius Spafford, the writer of the lyrics to the song, It Is Well With My Soul. Horatius Spafford knew something about life's unexpected challenges. He was a successful attorney and real estate investor who lost a fortune in the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. Around the same time, his beloved four-year-old son died of scarlet fever. Ter terrible times. Thinking a vacation would do his family some good, he sent his wife and four daughters on a ship to England. Planning to join them after he finished some pressing business at home, however, while crossing the Atlantic Ocean, the ship was involved in a, in a terrible collision and sunk. More than 200 people lost their lives, including all four of Horatius Spafford's precious daughters. His wife, Anna, survived the tragedy. Upon arriving in England, he, he, she sent a telegram to her husband that began, Saved alone. What shall I do? Horatius immediately set sail for England. At one point during his voyage, the captain of the ship, aware of the tragedy, sorry, Horatius immediately set, set sail for England. At one point during his voyage, the captain of the ship, aware of the tragedy that had sunk the Spafford family, summoned Horatio to tell him that they were now passing over the spot where the shipwreck had occurred. As Horatio thought about his daughters, words of comfort and hope filled his heart and mind. He wrote them down, and they have since become a well-beloved hymn. When peace, like a river, attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roar. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to know. It is well, it is well with my soul. What a powerful song. 
or powerful words. I believe it is only someone with hope in Jesus that can have such a stance in the face of hardships. Horatius Perford must have experienced the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, as Paul puts it in Philippians 4, 7. He must have experienced this. He must have experienced the hope that Jesus gives. And he must have experienced the life, the full life that Jesus gives. My prayer for us this morning is that as the chosen children of God, may we draw our strength and comfort from knowing Christ our Savior. Like Horatius Parfum, may our hearts forever sing, it is well with my soul. As the Jesus Curry reports, may we allow Christ to flood our, every sphere of our lives and may we endeavor to spread his aroma to those around us here and out there in our world today. Amen. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you so much, Wiki. Uh, the Jesus Curry Pots. Thank you, Wiki. Uh, uh, the Jesus Curry Pots. Now you know. Uh, Wiki, what can we be doing practically to help you? If people would be wanting to contribute to Quebec, it, uh, they can do so electronically, give electronically, or they yes. can see you this morning, perhaps, if, if they have a burden to support your ministry. Yes, and um, we've also got uh, Herman and Lyndon here who represent the board, and um, they will also have more details on how you can support uh, my work at Kama High School. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Well, can we pray for your work at Coma High School now? Is that okay? Yes, thank you. Let's do so. Let's pray. God of grace, we want to say thank you for bringing Wiki amongst us. Father, we say thank you that he is there being your hands and your feet, being your voice uh, amongst, amongst students and staff alike at Coma High School. Father, we pray that you will prosper his work. We pray that he will indeed be as incense flavouring like a curry in that place, Lord, providing your flavour, salt and light to Kaima High School. Father, we pray that you might be known through Wiki. Father, we pray that you might be clearly seen through Wiki. We pray that the kids might be drawn to Wiki, to the abundant life that, that flows out of Wiki. We pray that they might want more of you because of Wiki's work there. We pray for, for parents, Lord, and for the students that they will sign up to SRE, to Scripture. Father, we pray that these classes might be full. We pray that you might be using Wiki very powerfully in that place to grow your kingdom. We pray that you might encourage him. We pray that you might give him your joy in his work at Primal High School. In Jesus' name, the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Wiki. Thank you for joining us. Uh, when Wiki sent through his slides, I did uh, take the liberty of... Uh, of uh, choosing uh, It Is Well With My Soul to, to seem to reflect. It is one of my favourites uh, as well, particularly given that, that wonderful story uh, that inspired the writing of this hymn. So can I encourage you uh, simply to, to sit uh, and to, to worship. You can concentrate on the words, for the words are indeed are very powerful. The words are indeed uh, very profound. It flies in the face of the modern Western mindset, that I'm happy when good things happen and I'm sad when bad things happen. Well, the follower of Jesus says no. We have a biblical worldview, a different worldview. We have a different set of standards. And we know that it is well with my soul, even when, this, when sorrows like sea billows roll.
Jesus in your life. Oh, Satan should bump Oh, trials should come. Let this blessed assurance control that Christ has begun. future holds but we know who holds the future. We pray for countries which do not have good health services and particularly for our neighbour Papua New Guinea as they struggle with outbreaks of COVID. We pray for those who are sick, those who are tending the sick, those whose livelihoods are harmed and those researching a vaccine. As America and China become more and more divided, and we are deeply connected to both, 
Please show us a way to be peacemakers in the family of nations, starting in our own families and communities, and reaching out with your compassion and grace to a world in need. Thank you for Wiki and for all scripture teachers. Please be with him as he interacts with the adults of tomorrow and builds into them the only foundation that will last their lifetime. And we pray for Wiki's country of Kenya, a land of great beauty and promise, but also struggling with COVID, with neighbours at war and many refugees. Bless our Jeringong Church, Peter and Swanee and their families, the Church Council, and the Joint Nominating Committee as it seeks to find a new minister. We think of our link to the Light Home in India, another country devastated by the pandemic, and pray for safety for all who work there. Closer to home, we all have people in our hearts who are struggling in some way. Let's pause and name them quietly before you. May God, the source of hope, fill you with all joy and peace by means of your faith in him, so that your hope will continue to grow by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we end by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Thank you, Jane, and thank you all for your patience this morning, in particular thank you to those of you that have volunteered to, to head outside. We do appreciate your, your graciousness. This is the largest uh, gathering that we've had here since we've, uh, since we've started uh, again, so we're, we're doing everything uh, we can. Uh, the evening service, the kids go straight out so we can't fit in, so I want to thank you for your, your patience and, and understanding this morning. I'm going to conclude by seeing the, the Idlewise blessing uh, that many of us know and love from our morning service. Uh, I'm going to sing it. You might wish to silently pray as you look around and, and pray a silent blessing on your brothers and sisters in Christ this morning. Let's, uh, let's stand together as we, uh, as we close our service before we have a cup of together.